so much for that introduction, Dr. Orr, and truly what an honor it is to be here today. It's really hard for me to believe that I get to stand in front of you all, and I'm really humbled by this opportunity, to be honest, because of a school district of thousands of proud graduates, I get to stand up here and represent us. So to the returning teachers, I get to tell you about our experience of being your student. I have, I have the privilege to tell you what an impact you made on our lives. And to the new teachers, what a joy it is to hopefully offer you some words of encouragement as you begin this new journey. Life happens in these hallways and classrooms of the seven schools represented here today. My childhood and most of my teenage years were within these walls of social integration and self-realization and of course a lot of learning. To my teachers, you taught me so much more than what you may realize. So much more than what was in your lesson plan or in your textbooks. You taught me life lessons that helped me expand my perspective of the world. And then you gave me this boldness that made me think maybe even a person like me could challenge the cultural norm. You helped me internalize Highland Park's motto of enter to learn, go forth to serve. So let's start there. Allow me to preface the following illustration by telling you in advance that my story is one of transformation. By God's grace, I am not exactly the same little funny girl that entered kindergarten. So let's go back to higher elementary. <laughs> I knew very little about myself at that age except for the fact that I loved PB&Js and I would get really cranky if hungry. And my kindergarten teacher, Miss Morse, knew this about me and made sure to have a snack on hand when a meltdown happened. A turning point in my life happened in first grade during a lesson which I'm sure had so much thought and great purpose behind it. Miss Towns pretended to pack up her things and give us the opportunity to imagine a classroom without her there. And in that moment, my whole world crumbled. I couldn't imagine a classroom with no order or no structure or for heaven's sake, no adult supervision. <laughs> Anxiety instantly crippled me and became something I would relentlessly fight throughout the next few years of elementary school. Change terrified me. An unexpected substitute teacher meant it was sick day for Ellen and I was out of there. Thankfully, I don't remember most of the epic stories of my meltdowns, but my mother certainly does. By the end of elementary school, I had learned so much more than just about myself, than just my love for PB&Js. I learned that I was a small fish in a big pond, and that sometimes, well, all the time, things didn't go quite according to plan. But maybe most importantly, I learned that you can always find a friend when things get really hard. You just can't quite put your finger on what it is. For me, I looked to the front of the classroom. I looked to the woman sitting behind her desk with a presence that made me feel like she cared so much more about me than the lesson that was on the board behind her. To those five higher teachers, I am so extremely grateful. Thankfully, by the time middle school began, my fear of the known had, unknown had subsided. And thank goodness, because a melting pot of four elementary schools in one school would have completely undone me. In higher, I learned so much about myself. And in middle school, I began to learn about others. To my middle school teachers, you taught me about a world of people I never knew existed. I learned that there are people who live all over this world, and most of them live really differently from me. My eyes were open to poverty and politics and cultures around the world that overwhelmed me. Middle school was a really difficult chapter, but at the same time, it wasn't because of my own self-realization this time. It was because of others. I started learning about other people, and my heart just began to break for them. Maybe it was the compassion I was shown by my teachers at higher, and very likely it was because I couldn't be more grateful for them seeking me out when all I wanted to do was hide behind a fern. Middle school teachers, y'all have one of the most important roles to play. Between fifth and eighth grade, kids are figuring out where they fit in. We size each other up and we make friendships based on weekend plans and slumber party invites. 
We are beginning to learn about the world and its brokenness, yet we couldn't even see beyond the tip of our nose. Emotions were raw and friendships could be as easily made as they were broken. And when I was in the thick of middle school drama, my teachers taught me to have a greater perspective. Every day in your class, you allowed us to escape for 50 minutes and learn about a world so much greater than ourselves. Your lessons brought in my view. They sparked something in me that will forever change my life. In middle school, I learned about Africa. Your lessons captivated me about the continent and its people. And my heart broke when you rattled off poverty statistics. You began to stir something in me that I would wrestle with for the next five years. How could someone like me, at 13 years old, actually make a difference in this world? Thank you to my middle school teachers, like Miss McCormick and Miss Gake and Miss Lapp. You are my escape. You taught me lessons that allowed us to see a bigger world. You probably were very aware of the cattiness and the hormonal rage happening in us between the ages of 11 to 14. However, I hope we provided you with a little bit of comic relief along the way, especially to those who chaperone the seventh and eighth grade dances. I cannot imagine the painfully awkward moments you experienced when you did our first dance. And God bless you for keeping your composure and realizing what an awesome moment that was for us. So let's take a deep breath because so far my story sounds like I was an emotional wreck from the ages of 5 to 14. But remember, I told you that my story was one of transformation. And I can assure you there are some really, really joyful moments along the way. But high school was a game changer for me. So I'll introduce you to my best friend. I met my husband in the hallways of this high school. Actually, it was the hall right behind this auditorium during my freshman year. So he asked me to go out with him during passing period. And his timing was clutch because whether my response was positive or negative, the bell would ring and we could fly in two opposite directions. <laughs> but my spur of the moment decision to say, sure, was the best answer I've ever had. Because eight years later, we got married down the street at Highland Park Presbyterian Church. And in five months, we'll be welcoming our first daughter together. halls and classrooms at these schools. In high school, I also began to learn that maybe, just maybe, I could take initiative and have a voice that could make a change. I never thought of myself as a leader, and that all changed during the spring semester of my sophomore year when I became a Bell's lieutenant. For the first time, I was given a chance to lead. Under the direction of Miss Wheat, I began to find confidence in my ability to lead a group of girls. When self-image and insecurities and pressures are at an all-time high, I was given responsibility to care for my squad and make sure that everybody was comfortable. On the football field on Friday nights or in the gym at 6 a.m., I, I began to find an answer to that question that I had wrestled with for the past five years. Can I really make a difference? And the answer wasn't an assertive yes. It more was like a maybe. Well, I think I can. High school teachers and guidance counselors gave us the boost of confidence we needed to take the next step. We had been nurtured, cultivated, educated, and raised under the roofs of Highland Park schools for the past 13 years. And you all knew it was almost time for us to spread our wings and fly the coop. And I'm sure you knew how terrifying that next step was for us because you all covered us with grace and reassurance. My eyes were set on Texas A&M and I knew the academic push I would have to do to get accepted, which is still miraculous to this day. When senior eyes was at an all-time high and all my friends were laying out by the pool during their three off periods, I was cramming my schedule with AP classes and electives so that I could look well-rounded. To my math and science teachers, bless you. Thank you for having the courtesy of seeing a girl so far out of her element of dance and theater and arts. 
You met me after school and tried to explain that daggum punnets punnet square, even if it took a hundred times. My last four years at Highland Park were the best. I spent Tuesdays and Friday nights at Scotland Yard watching Clayton pitch, which was back in the glorious days of seven innings, or even better, the five inning, ten run rule games. <laughs> Clayton had my schedule memorized and would walk me to every class. And thank you to teachers like Miss Messer, who gave me about a third of the tardies I deserved. <laughs> By senior year, the nostalgia of leaving a place we had called home for the past 18 years began to sink in. Walking the halls of this school and passing hundreds of familiar faces and friends that we had grown up with was no longer taken for granted. We realized this, that that year the significance of what we were leaving behind. We saw our teachers cheering on the Scots from the, on, in the stands during the Friday night football games, and once again we were reminded just how much they care about us. To top off our year with the state championship was completely unforgettable. I finally received my acceptance letter to Texas A&M, and Clayton was drafted after our senior year by the Los Angeles Dodgers. So while he was going to go live out his dream of playing baseball after high school, I knew it was time for me to take my leap of faith. It was time to consider Africa. So after entering to learn, it was my time to go forth to serve. For 12 years, Highland Park educators taught me what this call to action could look like. Sometimes, this summon feels like a giant leap of faith into a life experience you're completely uncertain of. And other times, it means taking what you love to do, the talents you've been given, and begin to give back to others right where you are. For me, Go Forth to Serve was a calling on my life that began in middle school to travel to Africa. I didn't know where exactly, and I didn't know where exactly what I was going to do, but every time I considered it, my heart was just filled with uncertainty that I could actually make a difference. I was only 18 years old at the time, and I was well aware of the poverty and corruption that blanketed Africa. I couldn't imagine that someone like me could even make a dent. After years of wrestling with this doubt, the anxiety of ignoring this nagging was becoming more unbearable than just taking a leap and exploring this path. And actually, peace and fulfillment overwhelmed me as I stepped off the plane in Zambia for the first time. Remember, I promised transformation, right? I stepped out from the bird and into Africa. I knew I was exactly where I was supposed to be. For the first time, I held a Zambian orphan, and my life completely changed. All of a sudden, that overwhelming blanket of poverty became that one child. And it became very simple to me that if I could just make a difference in the life of that one child, that that would be enough. For the next five years, I made annual summer trips to Zambia to visit these same children. I formed relationships with them and I'd seen them grow, and it made it almost impossible for me not to continue going back. Teachers of HPISD, you played such an integral role in my life. I was a different girl landing in Africa because of you. Thank you. I knew that you had played a huge role in my life and in changing my world, but I had no idea that a nine-year-old Zambian orphan would turn it completely upside down. And so in December of 2010, I met Hope. She got off the bus at our campsite with hundreds of other orphans who were receiving one week of food and clothing and discipleship and playtime. I could tell right away that Hope was so sick. Many of the children she came with had been to camp before, and they knew that they were free to run around and play like kids, which is something we so take for granted here in America. Hope was not so sure about this. She had never been to camp, or for that matter, she had never stepped out of her tiny little compound. Hope has a similar story to millions of other orphans in Zambia. She is HIV positive, and um, she had been abandoned by both of her parents, learning to survive on her own at nine years old. Immediately, I felt this connection to Hope, and I spent my week trying to get to know her more 
and desperately trying to break down the emotional barriers that she had spent a lifetime building up. Every time I left Zambia, I knew that I was leaving a bigger part of my heart there, which is why it was so important for me to share this with Clayton just weeks after we got married. So just a couple weeks after our wedding, we were on our first international flight together to Zambia. My heart was racing. I was so excited to share my favorite place on this earth with my new husband. Meanwhile, Clayton's heart raced with this fear of a new experience where he felt completely out of his element. And, but soon, we were walking through the compounds of Zambia looking for my friends. We rounded the corner and hope came flying into our arms. My worlds were colliding and it was so sweet. Clayton and I have now traveled to Zambia together four times. It has become just as much a part of his life as it is mine. We both realize it's something we just can't turn off when we come home. If anything, it's almost just more consuming. We can't forget the children we meet or the stories we hear. We can't fall asleep at night without realizing just how blessed we are to have a bed to sleep on or a roof over our heads. Every part of our life has been imp impacted because we recognize how much we have been undes undeservedly given. So here's a little glimpse of the work that Clayton and I are getting to do together. What sort of challenge did you face today? Did you have a bed to sleep in last night? A roof over your head? A meal to eat? These are challenges faced by millions all over the world. Kershaw's Challenge is an organization that encourages people to use whatever God-given passion or talent that they have to make a difference and give back to people in need. Clayton is striking out to serve, donating money and changing lives with each pitch he throws. What started as a dream to help a little girl in need of a home has grown to be a community of people making a difference. Kershaw's challenge is more than just an organization. It's a summon to transform lives and make a difference exactly where you are. Challenge yourself, your friends, your community to come together and make the world a better place. We can't do it alone. We need you to come alongside and join the effort. Visit kershawschallenge.com and see how you can help us impact the lives of others. So Kershaw's Challenge is the name of the charity that we began four years ago. We created it with just one goal in mind. We needed to build Hope a home so that she could have a family of brothers and sisters and parents who unconditionally loved her for the first time. Kershaw's Challenge, it's a, it's a call to action. We want you to take whatever you've been given, whatever you love to do or whatever you're good at, and make it about something more than just that. Use it to give back to others in need. For Clayton, it's throwing a baseball. For the past four seasons, he's been striking out to serve, donating money to Kershaw's Challenge for every batter he strikes out. So many others have also come on board and shared what they're doing in their own unique way. The impact we're able to have together is far greater than anything we could do on our own. In 2012, Arise Home was complete and it opened its doors to the first nine children all coming from tragic backgrounds and unimaginable living conditions. Hope was the first to move in, and she was brought to tears to see that she was gonna finally have a bed to call her own. These children are now a family in every sense of the word, and they are inspiration to keep expanding our reach and growing Kershaw's Challenge. So we now serve kids in both Dallas and Los Angeles, each year picking new projects and partnerships to build with other nonprofits who are serving this community. We are hoping to open our second children's home in 2015. I tell you about Kershaw's Challenge not only because the beginning of it blossomed within these classrooms of Highland Park, but also because I recognize the extraordinary talent that you all have to make an impact right where you are. There is no greater role model than a teacher. You stood in front of us every day and you used your talents and your passions to pour into our lives. Even when sometimes we seemed disengaged, we were sponges, soaking up everything that you said and did. 
We remember our days at Highland Park and the teachers who forever have made an impact on our lives. And although I'm sure that the lesson plans are that you spent hours working on, I, I remember, I do. But what I remember most is your presence and your smile and your attitude, your compassion and your understanding. You are making a difference every single day in the lives of hundreds of kids and I am living proof that that impact matters and can last a lifetime. You will stir something in young hearts that may not come to fruition for years, but someday may turn into a, a life calling to travel to Africa. So enter to learn, go forth to serve. When that was printed on my class of 2006 t-shirt in kindergarten, I am certain I did not realize its significance, but oh, how it has somewhat turned into a life song for me. Teachers and friends, what you do matters deeply. Pour into your students. Build courage in young minds. Teach them to see a world beyond themselves. And don't forget to check behind the fern trees at the Holiday Bazaar. <laughs> God bless you as you enter this new year. Thank you so much for giving me the privilege to be with you all today. And one last thing, I'd actually, it was very unexpected that my husband could be with us today, but I know I'd love to introduce him and him come up to say a few words to y'all as well. I'm not sure I'm going to follow that, but uh, it's, uh, it's always tough to try and speak after her. But uh, just walking through these halls, this was the first time for me in a really long time. And uh, just what an amazing feeling, how many memories brought back. Um, I don't have much to say other than teachers, thank you. You know, I think we take you for granted. And uh, uh, just really thank you for all you did for us, uh, for me personally. Uh, that was my last education I've ever had. So I <laughs> And to the coaches, uh, thank you for making sports fun. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. The work and everything is great, but um, if those guys are having fun, that's what gets people to come back, and that's good for kids. So uh, just thank you for that. Thank you very much. Thank you for warmth is probably inadequate, inspiring is inadequate, but that's a wonderful narrative of your life's journey and the role that educators play. Uh, so a couple of things. There are educators in this audience that have were part of your life. If, if you had the opportunity to teach either of these wonderful young people or work with them, would you please stand? Quite a few people in this audience whose last name is Nelson or around Nelson, so let's ask the Nelson family to stand. Leslie and Jim. And, uh, I also want to share with the audience the extraordinary effort that was made for Ellen and Clayton to be here. Uh, Last night they were in Dodger Stadium. The Dodgers had a family and faith program that Clayton spoke at. They left LA at 3 a.m. this morning. <laughs> Arrived at 7.30 today. So thank you. You know, we're used to extraordinary effort and dedication by Scots, but I think you guys have kind of exceeded that lofty standard. <laughs> so a very small token of appreciation just from us to you. Thank you so much.